Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Sydney Harbour. We're trying out the Sony ZV-1F. We're going to put it up against the GoPro Hero 11 Black. So let's take a Jam Life a tech adventure. So welcome back to the channel guys. If it's your first time here, I'm John. This is Jam Life Tech Talk, where we look into cameras and all other tech used for vlogging. So today we have the Sony ZV-1F, which has a fixed lens on it, a 20 mil. It stops up to F2 and right back to F8. I have a filter on it this morning because it doesn't have any built-in ND now. The filter on the front is a variable ND and we do have a filter thread on the front of the camera so you can add filters which is a good thing because on a day like today with the sun very bright it's a great thing to add filters. So let's go back to the studio and take a deep dive into this little camera and oh while I'm here in the harbour we're going to be putting it up against the GoPro Hero 11 seeing which camera you should buy it for your vlogging adventures so let's go back to the studio hi everyone and welcome back to the studio this is a hard one to pick I did some testing with both cameras this morning and some low light and depth to field testing today as well so which camera wins and for what reason or is there even a clear winner at all let's go take a look at these tests and we will come right back and talk it out and hopefully have a winner at the end before we do i'm testing out two mic options the first being the ecm g1 for the sony and the media mod mic for the gopro just because they are priced fairly close together here's a mic test with the sony zv1 f and the little mic on top of it the ecm g1 so mic check one two three mic check one two three how's it sound i'm thinking really good nice calm day no wind so mic check one two three mic check one two three so here's a mic check with the gopro hero 11 with the media mold mic attached so test one two three test or one two three how's that sound up against the sony what do you think test one two three so here's a bit of a vlog test um, let's have a look at the stabilization also i just wanted you to see um, exactly what the focal length is this is linear so this is what i'd normally be vlogging in with the gopro hero 11 and uh, how does the mic sound while i'm vlogging very light setup very easy to vlog with this camera okay so this is the sony zv1 f this is a walking vlog test you're going to see here how the 20 millimeter performs with that active stabilization on um, so it should you know bring it in to say 24 mil um, how's it looking how's it sounding with that mic on top compared to the gopro what do you guys think what's the image quality like as well got that filter on the front and there we have it so guys here's a vlog test with the zv1f we're going to use catalyst brows this time so how's it looking stabilized with catalyst brows we're going to have to crop in a little bit so see if that's going to be too much to cope with the shake but this is catalyst brows on the sony zv1f so here's the first of the stabilization tests, the handheld tripod test. You can see here that the GoPro is the clear winner. We still have a fair bit of handshake there from the ZV-1F. And here's the slow pan test. You can see once again, the GoPro really steady. The ZV-1F, you can see a little bit of that handshake movement again. As we speed up to that fast pan, you can still see the movement in the ZV-1F, but it's improved. The GoPro, again, very steady. And here's that go mode that we usually do on the channel. Uh, just a bit of fun here, but you can see that the GoPro performing better once again. 
Okay, so here's the walking stabilization test. Here's where it gets interesting and really shows that, you know, if you're walking around with the ZV-1F, some of the footage will be unusable. The GoPro is just floating along though. Okay, and here's a running test. You can see ZV-1F, um, unusable in the running side of things. Here's something interesting though. Take a look at the Catalyst Browse section here, guys. I forgot to crank up the shutter speed, meaning I've got this crazy motion blur effect. Make sure you crank up your shutter speed if you want to use Catalyst Browse. Okay, so here's where the ZV-1F is going to shine with that one inch sensor, the low light performance, of course. So I've got an ISO test here, starting at 200 to 400 to 800 and 1600. Take a look at the results. I'm sure you'll see that as we go up the scale you're getting a better low light performance out of the zv1f for sure as we get to the sort of 800 iso mark you'll notice there's a lot of grain creep into the gopro footage as well the gopro are never going to beat the zv1f in low light it's just never been a good low light camera. It does seem to get a little bit better as the years go by with GoPro. Hopefully next year we're gonna get a, you know, upgraded sensor maybe to something larger like a one inch like the ZV-1F and then perhaps we'll see better low light performance. And here's uh, something you're not gonna get with the GoPro and that is the bokeh or blurred background that the ZV-1F seems to do quite well and here's an example of that and this blurred background look i've got to say is a real deal breaker to a lot of vloggers so this is a really hard one for vloggers and comes down to how you're vlogging but let's look over the pros and cons of each camera first so firstly the price in us dollars the sony zv1f 498 and the GoPro Hero 11 429. The Sony ECM G1 microphone is $129 and the GoPro Media Mod with microphone $79. They are very close guys, but I have to give the first win to the GoPro because it's a lower cost option. Next is size, weight and durability. The GoPro wins hands down here, much more robust, lighter, more compact and waterproof. If you're doing any sort of sport, diving or even roller coaster riding in your vlogs, the GoPro is the one for you and easily wins this point. Next, image quality. So side by side with the 10-bit color looking at the footage straight out of the camera, I have to give the win to the GoPro. Let's face it guys, most people using these cameras are going to shoot in auto. That's just a fact. And this is where the GoPro wins hands down. And that was quite a shock to me looking at the side by sides. So this leads me on to pro features. When it comes to exposure, the Sony will let you take full control over shutter speed, ISO and aperture. And also allow manual focusing. But just to let you know, auto focused on the Sony is one of its really strong points. It has excellent autofocus. The GoPro doesn't need focusing of course because it just focuses on everything in frame. But what this means, all those pro features get you much better image results in some circumstances. But it may be over the heads of some users. Still, the point here goes to the Sony. Next, depth of field or that bokeh performance, the blurry background, whatever you want to call it, this is where the Sony wins and GoPro is not in the race as it will focus on everything like I said in the frame. And the Sony even has a blurred background button to help the novice achieve it very easily. This look is very important to a lot of vloggers, in fact it can be a game changer and is present on all the Sony ZV cameras so a very important point goes to the Sony. Next is low light performance, which is something that GoPro has never been good at. And with that one inch sensor, the Sony will always outperform it. So the point goes here to the Sony, of course. And then there's stabilization. The GoPro just blitzes here. So smooth in every way. For me, it's 
very disappointing that the ZV series of Sony cameras don't do a better job here. Look, I know they aren't sports cameras like the GoPro, but they are meant to be for vlogging and vloggers do need better in terms of stabilization. Come on, Sony, help us out here, will you? Catalyst Browse does help a little here, but you have to go into the camera, turn the stabilization off and crank up the shutter speed. As you can see in the test, I forgot to do it, which didn't give the best results. And I've got to tell you, most people buying this camera won't even know what shutter speed is. So it kind of rules them out. I guess the other thing to consider is in low light, electronic stabilization doesn't work. So that puts the camera back on an even playing field. But in any case, the clear winner here is the GoPro. And then lastly, there was audio. So we did test external mics and clearly the ECM G1 won over the GoPro's media mod. The Sony was much better at focusing in on my voice and cutting out the noise from around me which is what vloggers want. And from past tests, I can tell you that the inbuilt mic of the Sony does outperform by a long way the internal of the Hero 11, in case you're interested. Having said that, you can place any external mic on the GoPro with the media mod attached. I'm using the DJI mic at the moment a lot and it's very cool. And in that instant, putting the same mic on the different cameras will get you the same audio result. But the point here still must go to Sony. So you've got a clear winner here for someone like me who owns other cameras like the ZV-E10 and the A7S III. So the GoPro is that winner because it meets that niche purpose. Like I use it on roller coasters in theme parks. And like I said, it has that special purpose for me, but it's not my main vlogging camera. What the ZV can do, I can do on those other cameras I own. So I don't need this specific camera. But with the GoPro, those cameras don't do some of the things that the GoPro does, hence I need it for that niche. But the real question is, if you don't own another camera and you have to make a choice over which to buy as your introduction to vlogging, then the decision is somewhat harder. If good audio, low light performance and that blurred background look are important to you, then go for the Sony. But if you need better image quality with 10-bit stabilization and a camera that won't break if you drop it, then go for the GoPro, pun intended. Just bear in mind for vlogging, these are both entry-level cameras. Although a good place to start, if you're looking to say move away from what your iPhone already does, I would say a look at APS-C or full frame offerings from Sony. But that's my say, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below and tell us which camera you think performs better for you and why. And that's it for today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos and drop a like as it really does help our channel out. And we'll see you on another Jam Life Tech Adventure.